Okay, my compound angle formula, uh, a way in which we can find sums and differences of exact values. So we know, you know, sine 30, sine 45. So if we add them together, we get sine 75. So we can actually work out a sine 75. If we get the difference, it'd be a sine 15. So we can actually work out a combination of our base angles um, by using these expansions in here. All right, so initially, if I want to work out sine of 15 degrees, well, that's the same as sine of 45 minus sine of, well, that's the same as sine of 45 minus 30. So if I use my sine expansion up here, sine x minus y, that's the same as sine x cos y subtract cos x sine y. So the angles change. These formulas you get given in all gear levels. So then just work out the exact values. One on root two times root three on two minus one on root two times a half. Um, we'll get root three over two root two minus one over two root two. So if you tidy up your third on the bottom, you'll get a root six minus root two over four, which is the same as our calculator dump. All right. What we're saying is cos of twice the angle is equal to that. All right. So if I've got a cos 80 degrees, I'm saying that's the same as cos squared 40 degrees minus sine squared 40 degrees, yeah? Or if it's, I don't know, sine of 120 degrees, that's equal to 2 times sine of 60 degrees times cos 60 degrees, all right? So that angle in here is half the angle at the front. That's the key. All right, continuing that along, uh, cos of 5 pi on 12. Sometimes it's a bit harder with the fractions. So 5 pi on 12 is 3 on 12 plus 2 on 12, which is the same as pi on 4 plus pi on 6. So for my cos expansion, it's cos, cos, opposite sign, sine, sine. Okay. So cos pi on 4, which is 1 on root 2, cos pi on 6, which is root 3 on 2, subtract sine pi on 4, 1 on root 2, sine pi on 6, which is a half. And we get a similar looking expression to the one on the previous page. Multiply top and bottom by root 2, and we'll get our root 6 minus root 2 on 4, which again is the same as our calculator dump. A little bit of a proof here. If u and v are acute angles such that tan of u is equal to 4 and tan of v is equal to 3 fifths, show that u minus v is equal to pi on 4. All right. So what I thought I'd do is take tan of u minus v and work that out. So if I work out tan of u minus v using my tan expansion, tan u minus tan v over 1 plus tan u tan v, and we've got those values up there. So I get 4 minus 3 fifths over one plus four times three fifths. We work through our simplifications, I end up with one. So I get tan of u minus v is equal to one. So u minus v is equal to tan inverse of one, which is pi on four. And there's the expression that we needed to show. Okay. So again, remember that with um, proofs and show questions, show questions in particular, show questions work with one side only and then show that the answer, because that question could have easily been um, evaluate u minus v. Okay. Uh, moving through, similar sort of question, probably a couple of ways we could have approached. Tan theta equals one on three. So there's a rule up there that tells us what tan two theta is. So we could perhaps argue that's a fraction early or um, we could have said that tan 2 theta is the same as tan theta tan of theta plus theta and then just use my compound angle expansion and this is what we would have got anyway all right so it would so if I think of what tan of theta plus theta is it's equal to tan theta plus tan theta which is 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan theta times tan theta, which is 1 minus tan squared. 
All right. So that's just a, a simplified version of that tan theta plus theta formula. Again, put your values in um, and we get our answers. All right. Back to the double angle formula. Next there. We do have another set of examples. Uh, okay. All right. So we might slide in towards our double angle formula here. So we've got a sine 2x rule. So we've got sine x. So straight away, again, I've got sine x, which means I've got cos x and tan x if I use my, my triangle. All right. So sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. And I've got sine x and cos x over here, so I get 24 on 25, all right? Now, cos a half x, so these are always the trickier ones when we have to work with the half angle. Looking at my double angle formula, what we're saying is, so if we actually, so if I've got a cos 2x equals 2 cos squared x minus 1, it means that cos x, a half that angle, is a half that angle, 2 cos squared x on 2 minus 1. So now I've got an expression for cos squared a half x. If I rearrange, cos x is negative 3 fifths, 2 times cos squared minus 1. Take the 1 across, take the 2 across. I get 1 fifth is equal to cos squared x on 2, which means cos of x on 2 is plus or minus 1 on root 5. Um, and since we're in the... Um, since a half the angle is going to be in the second quadrant, cos of x on 2 is equal to negative 1 on root 5. Excuse. All right. Tan 2x, again, we've got an expression for tan 2x. I've got it there. All right. So I get 8 on 3 minus 1 on 16 on 9. So again, put the values in for x. Simplify, we get our negative 24 on 7. Um, again, if I'm looking for tan 2x, well, I've actually got an expression for sine 2x already. Sine 2x was 24 on 25. So if sine 2x is 24 on 25, that makes the third side 7 from Pythagoras' theorem. Um, and so then tan 2x is opposite over adjacent, which is 24 on 7. The challenge with this one is, I know that the angle X itself is between, have I written it there? Yeah, so the angle it's X is between 180 and 270 degrees, yeah? So twice that angle is gonna be between 360 and 540, which puts it somewhere between the first and second quadrants. So in this example, um, it's a bit harder to determine the the sign on tan 2x is uh, ambiguous. We're not too sure just yet because the angle could be in the first quadrant or it could be in the second quadrant. Okay, so in this particular instance, you could argue that it is actually a plus or minus. Now, I think this is just the nature of an example that I created, um, which is why it leads to that ambiguity. All right. All done. All right. Let's try to make use of some proofs. So sec squared plus tan squared is 2 sec squared. So again, tan squared theta is sec squared theta minus 1. And I get 2 sec squared theta minus 1, which is what required. All right. Now, in this particular instance, normally I would encourage you to change my sec squares and tan squares into sine squares and cos squares. But because my right-hand side is in terms of sec squared, I left them as the same. All right. If we look at the left-hand side, uh, sine theta minus cos theta is sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta cos theta plus cos squared theta. Um, again, sine squared plus cos squared group them together. 2 sine theta cos theta, if we go back to our formula, that's the same as sine 2 theta, all right? And so I'm going to end up with 1 minus sine 2 theta, which is what the right-hand side required, okay? And again, using that same identity, 2 sine theta cos theta is the same as sine 2 theta. 
cos squared theta minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta is cos 2 theta, again, from the formula sheet. So very quickly, it leads me to a sine on cos. So I get tan 2 theta, which is the right-hand side. All right, so it's really a good exercise on just making sure you've got your formula sheet with you and you've got those identities there so you get a feel for which ones you need to use.